Hi, this is Jeff Spence, your Math 120 instructor for the Community College of Denver, and this is our video lecture over section 2.3, which goes over Venn diagrams and some set operations. So, well, we have a lot of things to cover here. Um, so, let's talk about Venn diagrams first. So, uh, the universal set is a, is a general set that contains all elements under discussion. Um, and then we make a Venn diagram inside that universal set. So John Venn uh, created Venn diagrams to show the visual relationship among sets. The universal set is represented by a rectangle and then subsets within the universal set are depicted by circles or sometimes ovals or other shapes. So what we see here is actually what you're seeing is set A being represented by the circle and then you'll see it A apostrophe which actually means not A, the complement of A. So within this universal set we could say like the universal set is residents of Colorado, and A is the set of Community College of Denver students, and A complement would be uh, people who live in Colorado that aren't Community College of Denver students. So uh, here's an example. It says determining sets from a Venn diagram. Use the Venn diagram to determine each of the following sets. So the universal set is depicted by the rectangle. Set A is the set of uh, the square and the triangle, and uh, the complement of A is the money symbol, the capital M, and 5. So the universal set is just going to be everything in here. So square, triangle, money, M, and 5. That's what uh, uh, U is going to represent. And then, oh, although the, tr the square is not showing up for some reason here, well, I don't know why, but the square should be there, okay? And A is the set of square and triangle. So the square is not showing up, but I promise it's there. And then the set of elements in U that are not in A. Well, that would be these three, the money symbol M and 5. All right, but the big thing that we want to go over is when we are talking about the representation between two sets uh, in a Venn diagram. So two different sets, not just A and then complement of A, but like A and B. We're going to have four different relationships. So the first one is going to be when two sets are disjoint, when they have no elements in common. So we can say like, um, let me think of an example here. So we could say the universal set could be um, students at the Community College of Denver. A could rep represent the students that are uh, in high school and B could represent the students that aren't in high school. Um, or we could have the universal set of Community College of Denver students and A could represent the students that are male and B could represent the students that are female, so they have no elements in common. Or we could have a, oops, sorry, we could have a proper subset. So um, all elements in A are elements of set B. So when A is a subset of B and not equal to B, then we have this relationship where all elements in A are a part of elements in B. Um, so we could say, let me think of an example here. How about uh, U is the set of all college students in Colorado, B is the set of Auraria campus students, and A is the set of CCD students. So all CCD students are Auraria campus students, and they're all going to be college students. Sometimes sets are equal, uh, exactly equal. They just uh, This is the least common example of the relationship between two sets because it's not very interesting. And uh, if they're equal, then we wouldn't write them out separately anyway. And then some, the most interesting one that we're going to look at is where we have uh, sets that have some elements in common. So we could say U is all community college students. A could be the set of car owners. And B could be the set of smartphone owners, okay? So if U is the set of all community college students, A would be the set of car owners, and B would be the set of cell or smartphone owners. The, the common place in the middle is the, is the intersection, so that would be people who have both a car and a smartphone. This section here, the left side of A that's not in B, would be car owners that don't have a smartphone. The section on the right here of B that's not an A would be people who own a smartphone but do not own a car. And then on the outside would be college students, once again CCD students, who neither own a car 
nor have a smartphone. So if I say that again, A would be the set of car owners, B the set of smartphone owners, the intersection is people who have both a car and a smartphone, this would be the region of people who have a car but not a smartphone, over here would be the region of people who have a smartphone but not a car, and outside would be the region of people who have neither a car nor a smartphone. So it says determine sets from a Venn diagram. So here we have a Venn diagram. Uh, here A is the set of these elements. This is what they have in common with B, and here is B's elements, and then here is the set of things that are neither in A nor B. So we have some Roman numerals and some letters. So determine the universal set. Well, the universal set, excuse me, is all these elements. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Oh, I think the Roman numerals is just the numbering. Okay, so sorry about that. They're just numbering them from left to right. Sorry. So the, the set, the elements are just A, B, the, the letters. Set B is just going to be uh, D and E. All right. So D is also an A, but it's still in B. Okay. And then C, the set of, uh, part C, the set of elements in A, but not in B. So the set of elements in A, but not in B, that's going to be these three letters, A, B, C. The region one. So they're just numbering the regions for communication. Region one is here, region two is here, region B three is here, and region four is the region outside. Okay, so the set of elements in A but not in B are A, B, C. D, same, same problem. The set of elements in U that are not in B. The set of elements in U but not in B. So really it's like we want to cover up B. So we're getting rid of D and E. So the set of elements in U that are not in B are A, B, C, and F, G. And lastly, the set of elements in A and B is just the element D. All right, complement of a set. So the complement of a set we talked about a little bit before, symbolized with A apostrophe, is the set of elements in the universal set that are not in A. So the shaded region outside of A represents the stuff that's not in A. So if we're talking about a set's complement, um, the universal set is the numbers 1 through 9, and A is the set 1, 3, 4, 7. Then the complement of A would be 2, 5, 6, 8, and 9, these numbers here. The intersection of sets is the, the middle part here that I talked about before. This would be the intersection of A and B visually. So they have to be in both A and B. It's the set of elements in A and B. So if we looked at the intersection of these two sets, we want to find the elements that are both in the left set and the right set. So it looks like 8, 10. 8 and 10 are both in both sets. Here, um, these are odd numbers and these are all even numbers. So the intersection of these two sets is the empty set. There's no, no elements in that set. And then the intersection of this with the empty set, well, there's no elements here, so they have nothing in common, just like this. That's also going to be the empty set. The union of sets A and B, written A, U, B, a set of elements that are either in A or in B, or they can be in both. So find the union of these sets, so 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 6, 8, 10, 12. So we just list each of the elements that are in either or set. So really we just list all these elements out, uh, just making sure that we don't list say eight and 10 twice. So really the union is much easier. You just list everything out, don't list anything twice. One, three, five, seven, nine with two, four, six, eight. We're just gonna list out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And the union of anything with the empty set is just the set itself. So that's just one, three, five, seven, nine. All right, and just so keep in mind, if you ever intersect the, the empty set with a set, that would give you the empty set. But if you union the empty set with the set, it gives you the set back. All right, so sometimes we have more than one set operation. We're going to perform the operation by doing the inside parentheses first and then going out, kind of like what we do in normal math. So let's say the universal set is the numbers 1 through 10. A is the set 1, 3, 7, 9. B is the set 3, 7, 8, 10. This says we want to find A union B and then the complement of that. So A union B, A union B is 1, 3, 7, 9, uh, so sorry, no repeats. So 1, 3, 7, 
8, 9, 10. That's what A union B is first. 1, 3, 7, 8, 9, 10. Then we're supposed to take the complement of that, understanding that the universal set is all numbers from 1 through 10. So basically we're looking for any numbers that aren't in the set that are 1 through 10. So we're going to see 2, 4, 5, 6, and that's it. 2, 4, 5, 6. All right, this one says we need to find the complement of A, intersect with the complement of B. So we should list out the complement of A first, list out the complement of B second, and then intersect them. So the complement of A is 2, 4, 5, 6, 8, and 10. 2, 4, 5, 6, 8, and 10. The complement of B would be 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 9. 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 9. Then we're supposed to intersect these two sets. Intersect is what they have in common. So 2, 4, 5, 6. All right, this one says, uh, use the Venn diagram to determine each of the following sets. So A union B. A union B would be all these numbers in this set. Um, A, uh, and then A union B not. So A union B not, or complement of A union B. So here's A union B. The complement of that would be 666. C, A intersect B would be root 2 and root negative 1. A intersect B not is really the intersection. We start with the intersection and then not that complement. I, sometimes I say not for complement. So the, we're A intersect B complement is pi, E, these numbers, and 666. All right, and then A complement intersect B. So A complement intersect B. So when we're talking about A complement, this guy right here, we're saying everything not in A. So that's going to be these three numbers and this number. These three numbers and this three number. Or these three numbers and 666 is A complement. Intersect that with B. Well, then it has to be in B as well. So it's just these three numbers. And then lastly, A union B inter, uh, complement. So A is this set, and we're going to union that with the things not in B. So uh, we're taking out all these elements that aren't in B and looking at this and this. And if we union the A with that, we're going to get everything in A and then this. And this is the longhand form of the answer of each answer. You might want to take a double look at that going back between each slide to double check the answer. Now, sometimes we use uh, common day language that's really the same as talking about these set notations. So whenever we refer to or, if we say we want either this or that, that refers to the union of sets. So if we're talking about if you need to um, uh, go on to a, nur a nursing program, you need to either take physics or chemistry, then we will take every student who takes physics or takes chemistry or takes both and refers to the intersection of sets. So if in order to, let's say a different example, if you need to go into a major and you need to take physics and chemistry, then that means you would need to have taken both classes. Don't worry about the cardinal number. We're not gonna really do that much. If you wanna look at this example, it's interesting, but we're not gonna work on that much. So that's it. There's a lot of set notation and set operation stuff. Good luck, and we'll see you next time.